Here we have ketchup and cornstarch with water, but why do their motions act differently? And here we have some water with food coloring, which has even more motion than the two previous fluids. The difference comes down to Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids, where water is a Newtonian fluid and the ketchup and cornstarch with water are non-Newtonian fluids. A Newtonian fluid is a fluid that experiences shear stress that is linearly correlated to the strain rate. A non-Newtonian fluid is a fluid where the viscosity varies based on applied stresses. Mathematically, for an incompressible Newtonian fluid, the shear stress is the absolute viscosity times the partial derivative of the velocity with respect to the height of the liquid, whereas the non-Newtonian fluid's shear stress is the apparent viscosity with relation to the shear rate, but here apparent viscosity is a variable dependent on shear stress. Here, let's have a closer look at the difference between Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluid in terms of the relation between shear rate and shear stress. For a Newtonian fluid, its shear rate and shear stress relate linearly. However, non-Newtonian fluids do not behave the same way. Specifically, they tend to have exponential character. Here are the typical curves for a shear thickening fluid, also known as dilatant fluid and the shear thinning fluid, also known as pseudoplastic fluid. Now we will compare the differences between shear thinning and shear thickening fluids. Shear thinning is the behavior when a fluid becomes less viscous as shear stress is applied, while shear thickening is the behavior where a fluid becomes more viscous as shear stress is applied. Quantitatively, for shear thinning fluids, its shear stress is proportional to its shear rate to the nth power where n is always less than 1. Shear thickening fluids have the same proportion relation, but n is always greater than 1. Now, let's take a look at the microscopic view. For shear thinning fluids, the particles are randomly scattered when at rest, and once they start to flow, the particles would disorder themselves in a more uniform way, which results in reduced amount of intermolecular interactions. For shear thickening fluids, the particle would randomly scatter with little intermolecular interaction when at rest, and once they start to flow, the particles would disorder themselves in a more compact way that is thermodynamically favored. The pink substance here is a non-Newtonian fluid which is made by mixing cornstarch, water, and a little food coloring for visibility. This substance is more commonly known as oobleck and is great for showing shear thickening. So previously, I was poking the oobleck very quickly on the right, while on the left, Tiffany is poking the oobleck very slowly. Now, I'll be poking the oobleck with the video filmed in slow motion to better visualize what's going on. While I'm tapping the oobleck quickly, I can't really break the surface, and you'll notice that there isn't much residue on my fingers. When I poke the oobleck very slowly, my finger sinks into the substance with ease. Next, I'm going to tap quickly again, and you'll notice that my fingers can no longer break the surface. This is due to the relationship between shear stress and du over dy, which is velocity over a distance. When tapping quickly, I'm applying a high velocity over a short distance, which will result in a very high shear stress, which is what makes it difficult for me to break through the fluid. When I tap slowly, I can get through more of the fluid because the shear stress will be relatively low. Another way to phrase this is if I tap quickly, I don't give the particles enough time to move out of the way. But if I tap slowly, I give them more time to make way for my finger. Next, we drop a golf ball into the oobleck to see how it'll sink into the fluid. When played in slow motion, you'll notice that it looks like the golf ball lands on a solid surface. Again, this is due to the relationship between du over dy and shear stress. After it lands though, the golf ball slowly begins to sink into the fluid. It is now allowed to sink because its velocity is very slow and the cornstarch particles have more time to move out of the way.
After some time, the golf ball will be almost completely submerged. Here, we have water with food coloring in a pipette compared to ketchup in a pipette. Intuitively, when we squeeze the pipette with the red water, it squirts out, hits the plastic, and flows down into the cup. When we squirt the ketchup out, it flows out like a liquid, but when it hits the plastic, it just sticks there instead of flowing down into the cup. The reason for this is that the ketchup is a non-Newtonian fluid that reflects sheer thinning behavior. This is essentially the exact opposite behavior that we would expect to see in the oobleck. This means that when a large velocity over a short distance is applied to the ketchup, it'll act more like a liquid rather than a solid. This is why when we squirt the ketchup out of the pipette, it acts like a liquid, but once it hits the plastic plate, it'll act more like a solid because now the velocity is very slow. We could calculate the non-Newtonian fluid's shear stress and apparent viscosity by utilizing the power law. Here is an example curve for a shear thinning fluid. As you might notice, the shear rate is on the x-axis instead of shear stress now, because shear rate is normally the one to be measured. By combining the equations of shear stress and apparent viscosity, we could have a character value k, which is the consistency coefficient. k is similar to apparent viscosity, but they do have different units. By applying the line function to all the terms, we could get a linear function, similar to y equal to ax plus b, where long k is the y-intersect and the n is the slope. This also applies to shear thickening fluids, where n is greater than 1. With known n value, we could easily calculate the parent viscosity with respect to shear rate. As the following graph shown, the shear thickening fluid becomes more viscous and the shear thinning fluid becomes less viscous as shear stress is applied. Usually, a fluid with a huge range of apparent viscosity is non-Newtonian fluid. Here are some examples of fluid viscosity. Do notice that the parent viscosity has the same unit as absolute viscosity. From the table, we could tell that benzene and mercury are Newtonian fluids, while honey and chocolate are non-Newtonian fluids. An example of a shear thinning fluid would be the saliva of frogs. The frog's tongues are able to stick to the prey because their shear thinning saliva is extremely viscous when still, and becomes 50 times less viscous when accelerating. Scientists have calculated that when the tongue is retracting, the force applied on the insect could reach 12 times that of gravity. This is also similar to paint, which adheres to the wall when you are not brushing it. An example of a shear thickening fluid is a special gravy that the U.S. Air Force has been developing, which is similar to the oobleck used in our experiment. It could potentially replace traditional steel body armor and is much lighter to wear. The fluid is able to catch bullets of 9mm fire and even a 0.44 magnum bullet, which is heavier and has a very high velocity.